It is the Mindset Monday edition of the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And yes, it is raining cats and dogs here in Lagos. I don't know what the situation is where you are, but it is raining cats and dogs. Uh, the weather forecast had told us there will be scattered thunderstorms and uh, it will be 27 degrees Celsius today. Uh, so it's raining cats and dogs. Sometimes um, some of these things, I don't know whether I'll call them lies or they don't factor in that God is God. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but also when you are in a car and you're relying on the map, to take you to where you are. Sometimes you pass your, your branch and you, you're going somewhere else. The map is directing you and <laughs> you get there only to find out that you had passed where you are supposed to branch off into somewhere else. Uh, so sometimes you rely on these things but know that there's also a factor that may be tiny but significant enough for you to know that you need to be cautious oh, when definitely. you have all these things. Definitely. Mm. Oh, well, we do have a report for you. Remember that we are reviewing the campaign promises of a new presidency and the effects of a new beginning on our mindset today. As we take in uh, what's going on today in Nigeria, uh, the inauguration of the new administration, the swearing of President-elect Ahmed Bola Tinubu today at the Eagle Square in Abuja. Let's take this report. We'll come back and continue with the first hot topic. May 29, Nigeria transits into a new government. The demands have not changed from those tabled before the outgoing government of President Buhari. Residents of Yenegua in Bayosa State tell the president-elect to fix the east-west road, security, health system, education, among others. The east-west road, um, there were budgets that were released to fix the road, but up till now, the road is not yet fixed. And it's a major route that connects a lot of states together and all that. I think and the incoming government should do something about it to put that road in place so that um, there can be transportation, easy movement of people, goods and all that. They blamed the outgoing administration for the hike in price of foodstuff. We failed in some aspects. Okay, for the incoming government, the, the, in as much as they are coming from the same party, but I know... Even two brothers cannot actually behave the same way. But they, I'm begging you, Tinibu, if you want me to need them, I will need them. I'm begging you in the name of God, whatsoever you hold so dearly. You see this Nigeria that is about to, that is at the verge of collapsing. Don't collapse it. They made a lot of promises when coming into office, like the area of security, job, employment, education. Even if there are a lot of areas they, did, they didn't do right. I think this incoming government will also do the same. So I don't really expect much from them. They should just do their part and leave office. I would say this government failed all of us. If I'm to give them a pass mark, it should be like 10 over 100. Because what they promised us when they came in, they promised us a change. And that change, we never experienced any change, any positive change. Actually, there was a change. But it was a negative side that we all experienced as Nigerians. From the look of things, we, are, we, are, we've all, we have become ants of Africa. They've been suffering. People, the health sector is suffering. The academic sector. What? Just name it. You say institutional by the government. You know, you can, you can clearly see that their visions and what they promised us, they didn't fulfill any of them. And uh, I would say this is a, this is the bad and the worst administration we have experienced in this country. In Kaduna State, residents expressed disappointment in what they termed bad policies of the outgoing government. Again, in this month, he has to gather money for him to buy his nomination form or whatsoever. They voted for him with their blood. But along the road, this government disappointed us. They made the people to have hope, which has turned to hopeless. People have been agitating People have been seeing Buhari as the only messiah of this planet Earth. But when Buhari came to power, he didn't do anything. So to me, if you want to talk about this government, this government has done nothing. They have failed the people woefully. They promised Nigerians that a bag of rice will be sold at the rate of even 5,000 Naira, and then Nigeria will be entitled or some allowances, they didn't meet up the expectation of Nigerians. 
And what I would like to say again for the incoming government, if they can be able to work on the lapses of the outgoing president or administration, they can really, really meet up what Nigeria wants. If you ask me, sir, to be frank with you, in my opinion, Bari record zero achievements. Yes. This one uh, from the coming government is uh, total reformation of, I mean, all sectors. Okay? We expect them, I mean, total reformation in all sectors. Residents in Kano say the Buhari government came with a lot of promises, especially with his change mantra, which they say haven't been fully fulfilled. One issue that I can say, yes, there is an um, achievement is the issue of diversification of the economy. We now shift from the uh, mineral sector to um, the agriculture. If you can remember the previous statement, the outgoing statement he made, he said, we grow what we eat, we eat what we grow or we die. So that's just maybe like a statement of maybe encouragement, but I know it might sound somehow to some people. So my expectation is not that huge, but you know Nigeria is full of nepotism, you understand? So the issue of unemployment, I can still, I'm reiterating on this more. So the issue of unemployment is still paramount. So I'm thinking this incoming administration, since the incoming president of Nigeria, um, Balaam Betinumbu, he says he's for the youth, so I hope maybe he might, yes, give the youth what they want, that is employment. I will say that this government failed in the area of stabilizing the economy because prices of goods and services continually skyrocketed without stabilization. The Naira redesign policy of the outgoing administration was the worst for me because the lack of cash made me lose my wife at the hospital when she was seriously ill. My prayer is that the incoming administration of Bola Tinubu will stabilize the economy and make life better for Nigerians. Uh, as a Nigerian, we are expecting a better Nigeria and a greater development from the previous government. But um, right now, what we see for the past eight years was not suitable for us. And the business strategies now, everything has become so devastated that we cannot even endure. Uh, to my own point of view, in the business I'm into, every price has gone higher than before. Before the interior government came in, the prices were very low, but now the prices were high. And you buy things more expensive than you do to buy before. And... Lagos residents share mixed feelings and hope the new administration will do better in improving the lives of Nigerians. President Mama Dubuaga actually did it best. You understand? We commend him for the things he done. But you know, in terms of security, he didn't actually do it because we expected more from him. Because he's a retired general. I know the security, uh, this, uh, security situation of Nigeria is better than before when PDP was in power because we know we can't go to churches, you'll be scared, you can't go to public places because of bomb blasts and all that. But all those issues, we don't have those issues now. But we still expected more from him because there are some new challenges that comes up in terms of security. We are looking forward to this uh, Bola Tinubu administration. We expected him to address those areas that President Mohamed has not really done away. Did I just hear you say education? No. Because students in university have dropped out for more than one year. And that one, I'm pretty sure everybody have heard about it. Security, people in North are dying every day by day. Boko Haram bandit, in Ibo land, everywhere, everywhere. Imagine someone like me now, I have school qualification, but I don't have work. And all that people have so, but they don't have work. Even if you have school qualification, even if you go to work, they will not pay you well. Imagine he said 30,000 naira as basic, but some companies are not paying. And nobody cares to ask if companies are paying well. Fuel is keep on increasing. So I pray for Bola Ahmed Tunubu, God will bless him and he will do well. He said it's easy. If it's possible to try you for like 10 days or 100 days to see how it feels, it's not easy. It's easy to take a horse to the stream, but it's not easy to force the horse to take water. It's possible he will tell them, this, 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 is that because he's hearing all the complaint of all, everybody. So it's not possible everybody will be complaining, the country will be on fire and it will keep quiet and be sitting there. It's not possible. He's trying. He has tried his best. As the administration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu gets on stream, Nigerians expect that naming a well-qualified cabinet who all cohere around a common development vision should be a priority for Tinubu as it will send a very strong and positive signal. Paul George, Plus TV News.
Well, that was uh, uh, the administration of uh, President Mohammed Buhari uh, through the eyes of the citizenry. At least um, uh, some of the people, uh, almost all the people were talking about how it's been difficult in this administration. But there are still positives if we look at it critically. And I do hope that we can see the positives and also hope that we don't see those positives as being better than the one that we are going to meet in the next four years after this inauguration, like everybody has been saying. Let us not, let us not look behind or uh, in, to the past and count our blessings from the past and forget the ones in the future or not see anyone in the future that we have. Yeah, that report there by our correspondent Paul Judge, feeling the pulse of the mm -hmm. common man and, and indeed um, it is important to, if you're going to assess a government, mm -hmm. Take the, fall, the pulse of everyone. Yeah. Rich, poor, middle class, that's if we still have middle class in this country, <laughs> and find out what are they feeling? How have they fared? And that was what we treated on Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Has this administration left Nigerians better than it met Nigerians in 2015 when it came into power? Obviously, from that report by our correspondent Paul Judge, he took, her, he, he took uh, uh, you know, Vox Pop from Kaduna State, the North, people from Bayelsa, South-South, people from Lagos, Southwest, and, you know, finding out how do you score this outgoing administration. And from what we could see, none of them spoke well of this administration. And so it, is, it, it says a lot about what Nigerians have gone through and what Nigerians are expecting from the APC, the mm -hmm. APC, the ruling of Progressive Congress. If they must... If they must um, get Nigerians to trust this incoming administration, they must be seen to know what they are doing from the get-go. Mm. Because, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, before this election came up, there, was, there were campaigns. Everybody was talking about what they were going to do. And right now we have a president-elect, which in a few minutes' time uh, will be uh, crowned president as it is for Nigeria. So we're going to take a look at some of the promises that were made during these campaigns uh, of uh, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu and by extension the entire APC that they are going to put in place. So we're glad that we're, be we're being joined by two very uh, prominent uh, analysts who are also very regular on the program. One of them is Nick Agule and the other one is uh, Jide, Jide Johnson. Johnson. Both of them are joining us now. Nick Agule and Jide Johnson, good morning and thanks for joining us. To be with you. Yeah. Yeah, good morning, uh, good Nick. Good morning to Nigeria. Mm. It's good and to see you. We also have Mr. Johnson Abu, a legal practitioner, joining us. So we have three uh, guests joining us to discuss Nigeria, mm. uh, the new dawn. Good morning, John Sinago. Good morning. It is my pleasure to be with you. Always a pleasure to have you join us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, happy Inauguration Day. Happy uh, Democracy Day. Happy May 29th to you, gentlemen. That's how we're starting with you. It's a prayer, actually. Uh, some people uh, feel when you say Happy Inauguration Day, and they will ask you what is happy about today and all that. But it's a prayer that this day turns out right. This day uh, marks the beginning of a new dawn for Nigeria. So let me begin with uh, Nick Agule. Today, there's going to be inauguration. In a matter of minutes, we're going to have a new president in Nigeria. Let's take your general feel of what is happening here today before we begin to x-ray um, um, item by item the kind of promises that were made by the uh, incoming administration. Thank you very much. Uh, today is uh, the dawn of a new era. Uh, we are going to have a new government at uh, the federal and at 28 of the 36 states we're going to have new governments today and the federal is a, a change of guards but not a change of party because the apc the ruling party will continue in government and for us nigerians we are expectant of change 
We had so many change the prime ministers as one of uh, the persons that came and said we, we, we were so expectant of change in 2015. Uh, we've not seen much of that change or if at all change in, in the negative direction. So we are hopeful that this time around things will be better and those who are taking the the range of power today will deliver on the social contract that we the people of nigeria have with them all right johnson Argo. johnson Argo, can you hear me johnson. yes i can hear you give us your pulse let's let's feel your pulse on what's happening today I, I don't want to sound so pessimistic because APC's government is actually not new. We've been in APC's government since 2015, and we were at point of despondency going into this 2023 election. So uh, telling us to renew hope after we've seen the, the last level, uh, I don't know, a lot of people are pessimistic about it, but I choose to see if that uh, uh, to hope you know to see if there's some form of hope anywhere so i am trying to take a look at their newest set of promises which are not exactly too new because uh, if you go through the 80 page the uh, manifesto that they released i think sometime on 16th or 15th of october 2022 you will be um you will see nearly the same thing as they said uh, uh, in 2015 and uh, they also promise to continue on the same work, the same trajectory as the last administration. That's the President Mohamed Buhari's administration that is ending today. So I, uh, I can't, I'm only trying to hope against hope, but I don't see what is going to be new. Hmm. Hmm. All okay. right. Let's, let's go to Jide Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. And the question is the same, but we're just asking you specifically, do you think this is a beginning or the beginning of something new or is more of the same? Okay, Jide Johnson has uh, not been able to join us. Okay, so let's, let's move on. Uh, Johnson, you've talked about this campaign promises that he made, um, and I'm glad that you were able to look at it thoroughly. Uh, the president-elect, uh, during his 71st birthday celebration, he did say that, uh, and I quote, I campaigned hard and made important promises. Those promises were not mere words, professed globally or cynically to win support. That he, he released that via his Twitter handle. Well, you are not impressed um, by the campaign promises. And I, I've looked at some of them. And really, I, I would say it's, it's just typical. I mean, each time we have new leaders coming, you have uh, similar things being said, uh, promise of making sure we have power, promise of getting jobs, uh, promise of this and that. Let me read some of them. Build Nigeria, uh, build a Nigeria, especially for our youth, where sufficient jobs with decent wages create a better life. All right. Um, modernize and expand public infrastructure so that the rest of the economy can grow at an optimal rate. All right. Generate, transmit and distribute sufficient affordable electricity to give our people the requisite power to enlighten uh, their lives, their homes and their very dreams. And you just begin to wonder, when are we going to leave this elementary level of campaign promises. Give us your take on that. Maybe we shouldn't be in a hurry to um, ask when we are leaving the level we are in. Or, I mean, the level of promises that they are offering to us. I think they are offering to us what they think we need at this time. Maybe when we move away from this level of need, somebody talks about Maslow's pyramid of needs. Mm -hmm. Maybe when we leave this level of basic physiological uh, needs, we can expect different promises, maybe something of another level. But at this time, these kind of promises are enticing. The only problem we have with APC's set of promises is that it is the same promise that they made in 2015. This same uh, VAT, this president-elect, isn't new. 
he made these promises on behalf of this outgoing uh, president. He uh, uh, swore that he's going to be effective if he knew how to effect these promises, which I believe are not new. I don't know why he didn't help the outgoing uh, president to effect them in the last eight years. Eight years is too big, too much, to be wasted, hoping for a turn. You know, before you can start effecting the promises you made eight years ago, it's terrible. That's the way I look at it from. But as for whether we are in this level, that is where we are. We are supposed to be met at the points of our need. Nobody should give to us what we do not need yet. For instance, when people build their flyovers in places where there are no traffic congestions, congestions. Yeah, I ask myself, why is Flyover just, I mean, what they call interchange. Is it a beautification or no? Is it just built for building C? Is it an artifact? Is it for aesthetics? Or is it meant to solve a problem? Is it functional? I, I would have rather preferred you take money you use to build that flyover at a point where it is not needed to build a bridge across a river to connect a community to the next community. That's the way I look at it. Both of them are bridges, as in, the one you call a bridge, uh, properly so-called, is the same as the one you call a flyover. They take about the same type of resources, the same type of uh, in, in skill, the same type of power. It's just a resource and location. So in the in context of our discussion, my thinking is that we in Nigeria are still at this level where we still need power to be available to us. We still need enterprises or enabling environment for enterprises to try so that in the cost of being busy, solving problems that generate uh, more money and more work, people will get employed. For instance, if I start a small farm, uh, probably as a poultry man, I start with 10 uh, uh, birds and probably because of the uh, food policy of Nigeria, I'm able to improve my uh, poultry stock, say 1,000. I alone will not be able to tend to 10, uh, 1,000 fowls in a day. I may, I may have to get a hand. And when, to, when a person can um, uh, care about, uh, care for uh, uh, poultry, 1,000 poultry, and he gets another person, the likelihood that they can multiply to 10,000 is there. And when they get there, they will not need another set of hands to do other things, maybe to kill the fowl, clean it up, refrigerate. Those are chains that we fall out as a result of improved activity from my own end. So this is what I expect at this stage. They should keep promising, but doing is more important than promises. Okay, thank you, uh, Johnson. Uh, you've alluded to the fact that some of these promises are the same promises that APC this party, this same uh, ruling party made to us in 2015, those promises not fulfilled. And I ask this question particularly, calling them elementary, uh, because, I mean, 62 years of independence and 24 years of democracy, one would have expected that a nation as rich and as buoyant as Nigeria, uh, one of the largest producers of crude in the world, should have passed this level. Nick, you want to come in? Uh, thank you very much. Yes, indeed, we should have gone past this point because our mates like Brazil, uh, Indonesia, and Co. Uh, Malaysia, they've gone past this point. So we're actually lagging behind. Uh, but before I will give uh, further details, I just want to say that um, my co-panelist, uh, Johnson, uh, has situated his... Uh, his point on the basis of party. But you see, in Nigeria, we don't actually see these parties implement their programs. We see more of the individual. Because in Nigeria, the party, the, if, I, if you look at uh, the APC of today, <coughs> which came into being back in 2014, the APC of today is being led <laughs> by a former PDP senator. Being uh, the secretary as I mean as chairman, and the secretary is a former PDP senator as well. You see, so the parties really don't play any role in Nigeria in terms of delivery. 
of their promises. It's about the individuals. And that's why for me, even though it is an APC government, succeeding an APC government, we need to look at the individuals involved because it is what those individuals actually decide to do that happens. You don't see like in other democracies where the party insists or even and twist those who have been elected to deliver on the party promises to the to the electorate. So I, I think uh, maybe after uh, 100 days, we will be able to say that the current set of leaders that are going to be sworn in today are on the same trajectory as those that they have just succeeded, or maybe they are charting a new course. So it's a bit early to wreck them. We just need them. In fact, the first thing we're going to use to wreck them will be the kind of appointments that they are going to make. You know, the, the, the quality of people they are going to put into positions will decide, I mean, will begin to show us, give us an indication of the direction to which they are going. So I will say that in terms of uh, where we should be, we should have been far beyond where we are now. Far beyond. You made mention of uh, power as one of the promises that has been made. As we speak today, Nigeria, a population of over 200 million, the power supply is 3,000 megawatts. 3,000. Compare that to uh, a place like Brazil. Brazil have almost the same population like ours. They are over 200 million. Their power supply is 150,000 megawatts per day. Think of 3,000. Think of 150,000. The likes of South Africa with a population of less than 60 million, they are supplying 50,000 megawatts. India, 1.4 billion people, are supplying 400,000 megawatts. If we in Nigeria, if we were to supply India the same power that we are supplying to Nigeria, we only be giving them 21,000 megawatts. 21,000. How do I mean 21,000? Because the population of India is seven times the population of Nigeria. And if Nigeria is giving itself 3,000 megawatts, just multiply three by seven, and India will be on 21,000 megawatts, but India is on 400,000 megawatts. And we're a gas-producing nation, you know? And the tragedy is that we spend time and resources to actually produce the gas. And when we bring the gas to the surface, instead of harnessing the gas, piping it through turbines to generate electricity in plentiful for this economy, mm -hmm. we set the gas on fire. And then, as I speak now, probably Plus TV is on a, on a generator. My own power was just supplied a, 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 like 30 minutes ago, and I'm here in Abuja, and yet I, I, I didn't have power. So those are the kind of things that make us to be lagging behind. There is no economy that is going to try without adequate power supply. Because power supply is like blood to an economy. And if you starve a body of blood, there are no doctors that are going to save that body. Doctors. The only way doctors can heal a body is to give that body adequate blood and then they now take care of every other thing. We have agriculture. It's rainy season now. Apart from rainy season, almost every community in Nigeria has a river around it. And that can be irrigation. If you dam a river by a community, you are going to get irrigation, you are going to get fishing, you are going to get hydropower, you are going to get potable water, and you're going to get tourism. And imagine multiplying all that. If I want to leave uh, Abuja now and come and meet you in Lagos, I'm going to go either by a very expensive or I go by road and I spend the whole day. But I can just get on a fast train Within two hours, I leave Abuja and Lagos. Imagine all those trains. Imagine we have rail connecting the federal capital to each state capital in Nigeria for a start. Just imagine that. And then you can look at how convenient we can move. You can see how convenient our goods can move. Then you can see the jobs that will be created for our youth. But there are all these kind of things that governments must come and tackle head on. We don't tackle them. We allow four refineries to rot. And for eight years, a government will continue paying subsidies in trillions of naira. You know, so we have all sorts of low-hanging fruits. And I, I, I hope and I, I pray that this coming lead, set of leaders should just hit the ground running. 
They should just look at us, the suffering people of Nigeria, and just have mercy on us. Let them just deliver in terms of all that we need. Okay, uh, well, let, let me just pose this question to both of you, beginning from, uh, or beginning with Johnson. Um, needless to say, the campaigns are the same. You guys have said it already. The campaign promises of 2015 resurfaced in 2019, now in 2023. Mm -hmm. They are the same. But a critical uh, point is that they have not been fulfilled the way Nigerians wanted them to be fulfilled. So my question is, what would you advise should be the right route to take, the right route to take to make sure these campaign promises are, uh, are fulfilled the way they should be? The promised security, job creation, transportation system, education, unity of the country, a lot of these things are not there. I'm not sure Nigeria is more united now than in 2015. I'm not sure that we have a better transportation system. I'm not sure that our education system is better, not with the long strike that we had, or the security situation has improved. Even when this administration prides itself as being the administration that has, has uh, plucked the feathers, as it were, of Boko Haram and other insurgencies in the country and all that. They say security has improved with them. Nigerians see differently. So. What is that critical thing missing that the previous administration, I'm talking about the one that is handing over today now, uh, could not do to bring these things to fruition that the next administration needs to look at to make sure that these campaign promises are fulfilled? Johnson, let me begin with you. Yeah, thank you for this question. I think that's the, um, uh, the proper starting point. Um, this expiring administration got it wrong by not putting round pegs in round holes and prioritizing projects according to needs. They play to the gallery, prefer to do white elephant projects to, in quotes, impress the uh, constituencies that gave them 97% votes over and above the constituencies that gave them 5% votes. With that mindset, not being inclusive, they couldn't have gotten to the right tracks. And if you are in the wrong route, you can never get to your destination. I will give an illustration. We spent a lot of money constructing gas pipeline from Ajokuta to Kanu, and with intention to take it to Niger Republic. Gas pipeline is supposed to convey gas. And we intend that the, the industries located along that gas line will now switch their energy consumption from whatever means they are using to available gas resources in Nigeria, which is intended to be cheaper. And we believe that in such process, we will create more jobs, or make cost of production cheaper, and you know attract more industries. However, that AKK project, of course, it was conceived by the previous uh, Jonathan administration, and in fact started as in bidding contracts and all of those things started in 2013 or about. But the prerequisite, the starting point was now omitted. That is bringing gas, gas from the points of production in the southern part of Nigeria up to Ajokuta. So we neglected the southern phase of that ga gas pipeline. And in my view, nepotistically, because there is no sense in commencing the construction from Ajokuta to Kano and then to Niger, when there is no gas in Ajokuta. So if we had constructed the gas pipelines from the south up to Ajokuta, all the industries in the south would have started using the gas pipeline and the gas in it and would have been probably cheaper. And the money we would charge the industries would have generated enough money for us to construct from Ajokuta to Kano. And if we want to dash Niger to Niger, now we had to go and borrow from China a lot of money, as much as $2.8 billion, 
to build a gas pipeline that will not be in use until we have gone back to do the one from the south to Anjokuta. I expect the incoming administration to have a different priority. Let its priority not be to pepper them in quotes. Let it not be to compensate the people that gave it 97% vote and whatever, whatever. Let it be to take decisions that are functional in the best interest of the society. I'll give another illustration. We are constructing a railway track from Abuja to Mararadi in Niger Republic, probably because our president said that his cousins are still in Niger Republic, and if we trouble him, he will go there, and if Nigeria disturb him too much, Niger will, uh, will defend him. But can that red track from Abuja to Mararadi generate enough money to repay the money that we are sinking in it? We are asked, if we had done from Calabar to Lagos, thereby connecting Port Harcourt, um, uh, uh, Aba, Onisha, Benin, and all of those places. First, that track alone, or Abuja to Lagos, that track alone will generate a lot of money with which we will pay for the track between Abuja, Kaduna, Kano, to Mararaji. So we will not need to borrow the money that we have now borrowed to build the track between Nigeria to Mararadi. Just in Abu. And by so being. And yeah. by Just so being. Can you hear me? Just in Hello, Time Johnson. will not allow us to continue uh, with this discussion. You are giving us very, very um, brilliant analysis of what could have been done right by the outgoing administration. But time will not allow us to continue with it. Nick Agule, you are in Abuja. Um, time will also not allow us to ask you um, to give us a picture of what you're seeing there playing out. We've seen the pre-inauguration lecture that took place. Uh, we saw the former uh, Kenyan president, Uhuru uh, Kenyatta there uh, in Abuja. We saw Reverend Father Kuka. We listened to the beautiful speeches they gave. Um, I'm sure Abuja is a god with festivities. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Happy inauguration is what we're wishing you, Nick and John Sinago. And thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. OK, uh, well, The Breakfast, we'll just take a break today. Uh, we're going to go on to get you the news. And after that, we'll open our inauguration studios, where we'll have some analysts also talk to us about what is going on uh, at Eagle Square this morning and uh, elsewhere in Nigeria, how the people are looking at the day of today. Uh, 29th of May. It's already a public holiday and people are at home. Thank God for that. We were able to get to work on time. But before we go, let's leave you with this quote. Uh, Robert Louis Stevenson says, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. Ask yourself, what seeds are you planting today that can be reaped tomorrow uh, by generations, maybe even unborn? Until we return at 9.30 with the a studio or the inauguration studio. I'm still Nyambu Lagaji. Naya Morin. Join us after now.